Hey, beautiful creepsters. You are listening to A Paranormal Chicks Sinister Sightings with Donna and Carrie. Oh my God, what was that? I think there's something in my house. I think there's somebody in my house, guys. I don't see anybody, though. Hello? 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 Oh my God. Oh, oh, oh. oh my God. I don't know what to do, guys. There's someone in... I'm Donna. And I'm Carrie. And we are Paranormal Chicks. Sinister Sightings 115. And you just heard Valerie F. And side note, no one was hurt in the making of that intro. She is safe and sound. Well, I don't know if she's of sound mind. (laughs) But her body and soul are safe. Yes. I tell you, what's not safe? My fucking sinuses. I was about to say, if you can tell, she's sick. Why? Why all the time? It's actually been a long time since I've been sick. Mm-hmm. These, I'll tell you why. Her boyfriend's sick. I know, but I'm saying these it, these weekly infusions for our immune system have been uh-huh. fucking working because I, I really haven't been sick in a long time. You really haven't. Do you remember that one year when I had the three-month-long cold? Oh, my God. Do I ever. That was horrible. You don't like, have to tell me twice. I was going to say, everybody's like, you're telling me. We had to listen to your fucking ass. Mm-hmm. But back to Valerie. She kicked ass on that introduction, so thank you so much, Valerie. If you want to introduce an episode, y'all know the drill. Head on over to patreon.com slash the APC podcast. Or, you know, if you can't afford Patreon, we understand that. We do have some new Creepinati members that have got to that tier, and they're like, you know what? I want to donate. So we have some donations, you know, building up. And we'll do a new giveaway soon. So join the Facebook group. And be looking out for the giveaway. Okay. The first one is called Disneyland Edition. Hello to my favorite podcasters. I'm sorry, but I will not be skipping the you guys are so great intro part of my Sinister Sightings email. So you have no choice but to read my compliments. I recently moved across the country. And with that, I had to say a hard goodbye to my best friends since childhood. It's so heartwarming to listen to you two crack each other up as it hits me right in the feels and reminds me so much of my friends back in my hometown. You both are such a ray of positivity in a shitty year, so thank you so much. Okay, now to the story. I am a born and raised Midwesterner, and like all born and raised Midwesterners, my family went to Disneyland for vacation over the summer when I was growing up. This story takes place when I was probably between 10 to 12. Disclaimer, I do want to say that while I enjoy a visit to Disney and eat my weight in every food possible while there, I am not a Disney person, TM. No hate on those who are, I just do not want readers envisioning me wearing a goofy hoodie for the duration of the story. To avoid paying the absolute ridiculous prices that come along with staying in a hotel on Disney property, my parents reasonably decided to use some of my dad's sweet, sweet Marriott rewards points and got us a deal on a hotel room about a half mile from the park. The room wasn't anything special, but the layout is important to the story. It was a typical family suite with a bedroom and a living room. The bedroom had two queen beds and was connected to the living room by a set of French doors. The beds in this room faced the doorway and both stared directly at a pull-out couch. My brother, the youngest in our family, has never slept on a bed in a hotel in his life. Oh, I feel that in my bones. He is always the one relegated to the couch bed or roll-away cot whenever our family travels. Now that the background has been set, let me get to the story itself. After a long day in the parks and probably a marathon's worth of steps, my family came back to our room and all immediately passed out. I'm not sure of the time, but at one point during the night, I woke up after a slightly uneasy but not memorable dream. Just as I'm about to roll over and go back to bed, I see a huge black shadow that looks like smoke 
curling on the wall above the couch bed. The shape was tentacle-like, with little tendrils curling and slowly moving, reaching down towards my brother. The great big sister I am, I freaked out and slammed my eyes shut, willing myself to go back to sleep. In the morning, my family is all downstairs in the lobby, monopolizing the waffle machine at the breakfast buffet. My sister starts telling us that she didn't sleep well the night before and that the weirdest thing happened. And, of course, you know, she starts to describe that motherfucking black smoke. Well, she said MF black smoke, but, you know, I added the flare. Then my dad, lifelong engineer and absolute skeptic, stops dead in his tracks. He proceeds to say that he saw the same thing. Same spot, same shape, same general time. The three of us are shocked, all trying to come to terms with what we saw and the possibility of it being real when my mom joins us. We tell her about this and the look of sheer panic comes over her. While she didn't see the smoke, she had the following dream. My mom had an aunt who she is very close to. At the time, she was very active and was overall a very healthy woman in her 70s. That same night, my mom had dreamt that this aunt was on her deathbed and that my mom was sitting next to her. All of a sudden, the aunt grabbed my mom's wrist with an insane amount of force and wouldn't let her go. My mom knew she was a devil and began to recite the Lord's Prayer over and over. The aunt wouldn't let go and was just staring at my mom. And she did this with blank black eyes. My mom doesn't remember how it ended. Just that first thing that morning, she called her aunt to check in. And that's it. None of us have seen anything like that since. My brother doesn't even recall anything being weird that night. The rest of the trip passed without incident. We did not stay at that hotel again, but we also did not start springing for the official Disney hotels. I still think about this smoke from time to time, trying to think about what it was we saw and what had come into our hotel room that night. All I know is that it was such a sinister change from the happiness Disney promotes. I just want to know what it was and how it found itself outside that park. Happy Halloween, even though I know this story won't be read until way after. Chloe. I'm guessing that did not show up on y'all's itinerary of Disney things to do. Right? It wanted a churro. It wanted a Dole Whip. That's what it wanted. No, it wanted a Mickey Mouse head ice cream. Look, you can get those at anywhere. Like, my ice cream man in Mobile, Alabama, shout out wherever you are. He's not alive. He was like 80 when I was a youngin. A young warthog? <laughs> I didn't say you were fat. I'm just, just from a fucking Disney movie. It's on brand. It is on brand, but you know that is true. No one wanted to be downwind. You act like it changed. The wind did not shift, ma'am. No. No. Mm-mm. That is super scary. And that your dad, who's like scientific, honey, I shrunk the kids over there. On brand, too. Damn. Um, that was one of my favorite exhibits there. Exhibits? That was there? Uh Uh-huh. Okay, well, when I was there, I don't think it was there. Oh, no, no, no. no. Well, it was there when I was, like, eight. Well, you know what? My family was poor growing up, and we didn't get to go on fancy vacations like that. We only went because my dad won the money at a casino. Uh, well, my family was poor. Your family went to casino, (laughs) too, bitch. Don't even play. I'm just kidding. They did. (laughs) Oh, but we were still poor because they lost all their fucking money. (laughs) I mean, we did, too. Sands the one time. Uh, They just kept going back every time. And I wonder where I get it from. I've lost all my money. I think I could play again and I would win it back. Oh, my God. I was talking to someone. God, I don't know who it was. But I was like, man, I really wanted to have coins when I was younger. Because when my parents went to the casino... They had coins coming out, you know, and Uh that's all I wanted so bad. Like, I can't wait till I have buckets of coins. Like, that's so cool. Uh Uh-huh. We went on a cruise one time. Like, it might have been my first cruise. And the casino there had coins. And that bucket was so heavy. And, like, let me tell you, I did not win. Don't play on a cruise casino unless you you have lots of money 
to maybe win because my aunt won some money, but she has like money to burn on that. Yes, you have I to have bukus of money to yeah. win on a casino. When I mean, ha- on a cruise. Sorry. Yeah, when you have only a hundred dollars, you're not gonna like unless you are just lucky. You're not gonna win, hun. Mm-mm. So like those uh, those nickels or pennies or whatever you get, you know, like um, they just are heavy. I was like. Oh my God, I'm so glad that we don't have these anymore. Like, I like that ticket. It's real light. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, why did they ever like this? <laughs> Who liked this? Mm-mm. But I sure did. I sure did. That was, like, that was my goal in life. I was going to have a bucket of coins. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's the small things in life, man. It really was. What did you want to be growing up? A leprechaun, basically. <laughs> Rumpelstiltskin? No, I don't want nobody kids. He made her spend money and spend their thing into gold. Yeah, but it wasn't for him. What was it for? For her to get the prince. He wanted her firstborn child. Oh, I just want the gold. <laughs> Kara got that all wrong. I don't. All I remember is the gold. He comes back for her firstborn child because she's like, "I'll do anything." He's like, all right, I want your firstborn child. And she's like me, being like, okay, sure, whatever. I, I just want the guy. I just want the dick. I'll do anything. And, like, thinking, okay, he'll never remember. Uh, old Rumpy's, like, uh, a rumba bum bum on the window when she's in the nursery. And he's like, time to pay up. And she's like, uh, who you is? And he's like, your baby daddy. And, and then what happens? And then he's like, she's like, what can I do? I don't want to give you my baby. And he's like, if you, if you can tell me my name, like say my name, say my name, you can like, I'll, I'll leave you alone. And that's when she has to go out there and hear him like conjuring up some shit in the woods. And he's, you know, pleasuring himself by saying, Rumpelstiltskin, she'll never know. My name is Rumpelstiltskin. You really don't remember that? I didn't remember any of that. Like, I think he's riding around on a spoon or some shit in the woods. <laughs> I didn't remember any of that. Fucking You were like, needle he, dick. he made her spin it into gold. Um, No, honey. She she wanted that because she was a miller's daughter. But he wanted her to, like, be better than him. And so he's like, if you can spin this straw into gold, you will marry the prince. Like... <laughs> Who thinks of that? And then little creepazoid's like, You see? I'll help you, you see? Just give me your firstborn. Like, sir, I am 14. Uh, uh, well, if you're like Carrie, you had your period when you were 10. But, okay, so circling back to Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, science-minded dad. But for him to see the same thing, though, like, it's not like... It's me being like, I saw the same thing. Right. Like, I feel like that's just more... It holds more more weight. Yes. Why are we on the same wavelength? Because you're sick. You're sick of the mind, too, now. Oh, so now I'm just like you? Yes. Okay. What's that say about you, then, ma'am? I'm insane. In the membrane? Can you stop messing up my flow? (laughs) (laughs) Well, if your flow wasn't so goddamn slow. <laughs> can I listen to you on 2.0, please? Good I mean, Lord. Talk faster. Shit. Someone said they listened to us on 1.5, and I'm like, they probably listened to me on 2.0. And you, you talk on so 1.5. slow. <laughs> you really do, though. I really do. I know. Okay, the next one. Hey, ladies. Monica from Northern California here. I was late to the party, but I've been listening to y'all for about five months now. I'm an essential worker, and I'm always laughing along with you two on my commutes to and from work. I love how real and down-to-earth you both are. Anywho, I have a few short tales of my own, and I hope they spark your interest. I grew up in a single-family home built in the 70s. So, it wasn't an old house. Well... Granted, I still think the 90s were 10 years ago. Me too. Well, I think the 80s. Is that what I think? God, no, the 90s. You're right. Me too. God bless. Donna doesn't know what she thinks. I re- this week, I was at my dermatologist and the lady who I pay the bill to, 
I was talking to her and I was like, I think I need to do brain games. I'm not thinking correctly. And she was like, me either. She had to do the math on something like four times. And I was like, okay, it's not just me. And I said, I think y'all need more oxygen in here. And she laughed so hard at me <laughs> because I, I don't know. I was just flubbing up everything. And I mean, that's kind of the norm. But like this was like times two. Anyway, yeah, I think it's the 90s that we always talk about. It's like, oh, yeah, that's 10 years ago. And then uh, Carrie had um, an epiphany that uh, it's almost been 20 years since we've been out of high school. Yeah. Yeah. That was fun. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, oh, shit. Oh, damn. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But anyway, back to Monica. But I honestly don't believe that it was haunted. You know, just the normal jumping from your bed to your door so the monsters under your bed couldn't get you. I also remember dreaming of me flying around my bedroom. Anyone else have those? Moving on. I recently recalled something that would occasionally reoccur when I was around 10 years old. And looking back, it's pretty creepy. Let's go back about 22 years or so. My parents' bedroom was right across the hall from mine, and sometimes I would peek in their room on the way to the bathroom. Not sure why. Guess I'm a creeper. Monica, you and me both. We both know. I would have tried jiggled the handle if it was closed. We know this. If it didn't do anything, I would have pushed it open. She's not lying. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. But what I would sometimes see were dozens of black figures just aimlessly walking back and forth in their bedroom. These figures never noticed me and just kept walking around, almost like a residual haunting. I'm talking the room was filled with these shadow people. How this never freaked me out is beyond me. If I saw that now, I would die. It was something so random, but I used to be more sensitive when I was younger. Fast forward to 2004, the year my grandmother, my mom's mom, passed away. I was a high school cheerleader at the time, and during a game, I had asked my coach if I could call my parents to check in on her because she was on hospice and seemed to be at the end of her life. Um, she told me, no, can I get a big fuck you? So I snuck behind the bleachers and called my dad anyway. I said, how's grandma doing? He said, she's in a better place now. Right then, my bitch-ass coach grabbed my phone and hung it up. I yelled, my grandma just died and bounced out of there. I can't exactly remember if this next incident was immediately after she passed or a little later. But here it is. I plopped down on my bed, lying on my side, facing the wall. Underneath my covers with my right arm exposed. I'm starting to drift off when I feel my mom grab my right shoulder. However, I lifted my head and looked behind me. My mom wasn't there. My bedroom door was still closed. It did freak me out, but I knew it must have been my grandma saying goodbye. Oddly, even though I thought that, to this day, if I lay on my side, I need to have my arms covered up so nothing can get me. Because blankets protect you from everything, duh. Fast forward to 2015. I have a lot of my grandma's furniture, as well as her trinkets, including a very old music box. The kind you have to wind up on the bottom and open on top to make it sound the music. Well, at this time, I lived in an apartment with my best friend. My very new fiancé and I had just come home to my apartment from our trip in Hawaii. An amazing trip, may I add, because we had just gotten engaged. Dang, okay. Right? We were super tired and threw our luggage on the floor in my bedroom and proceeded to get ready for bed. We always liked to watch scary movies before going to sleep. So my fiancé was lying in bed while I was picking out a movie when we both heard my grandma's music box go off. It played music for about 15 seconds. Neither of us wound the box up to make it play. Plus, we had literally just walked in. I believe in the afterlife, and we both kind of chalked it up to my grandma, except in the fact that I was going to marry him. I called my mom the next day, and I told her what happened, and she said, 
Oh, yeah. That's just grandma approving of him. One last story. Fast forward to just last week, August of 2020. My hubs, our littles, pup and I evacuated our home due to blazing fires in our community and surrounding counties. So we packed up what we could and drove two hours away to stay with my parents. They lived in the actual house that my mom grew up in, built in 1952, and where both of my grandparents passed. Littles were staying in the very back room, which had my grandma's old dresser in it. One afternoon, as I was putting her down for a nappy, cue Carrie's delight, and while pushing some trinkets to the back of the dresser so she couldn't get to them, there was a solid bang that came from what seemed like inside the dresser. It was so loud that my hubs heard it from the kitchen. There are a lot of walls in the house since that was the style back then, so the fact that he heard it from the front of the house was crazy enough. It wasn't like a small knock. It was a strange, loud bang. I looked around to see if something had fallen, but there was nothing on the floor. Moments later, as I was standing there singing to Littles, I felt a breeze brush the left side of my face and hair. I figured it was the AC turning on. However, I found out later that my dad did not have the AC on at all. Uh, I can't stay there. (laughs) He didn't have the AC on at all? What the fuck? Woo! Later that night, I woke up at 3.30 a.m. I wasn't sleeping well, worrying about our house, so that was pretty normal. But all of a sudden, I felt a vibration from the bed at my feet. It's something that I've experienced before and is unexplainable. Hubs didn't feel anything. Not too long after, I heard two taps coming from the dresser in our room, and then the floor creaking outside of our bedroom, and then I heard whispering in my right ear. I wasn't really that afraid because I was sure it was my grandparents keeping me up all night. I think they came back to visit because they wanted to meet our littles. Oh, and our house was saved and we were able to go back home 10 days later. Well, that's all for now. I'll write in again soon. I have a weird story about my late grandpa showing up in developed photos. Another where my mom and I felt a strange heaviness during house hunting and some college Ouija board fun gone wrong. Oh, also, I wrote in the Facebook page about my Nana recently passing away and how I felt her presence in her bedroom the next day. Lots of my stories are regarding my family members, and I'll treasure them. I just hope I never see shadow people again. Thanks for keeping me laughing and telling all the awesome stories. I literally run to Google after every episode. XOXO, Mon. P.S. to Carrie. I recently listened to an older Sinister Sightings where you questioned if keeping a pregnancy test was weird. Well, girl, you better believe I kept mine. That shit is men's. I mean, I guess the pee dries out. Question mark? (laughs) Question mark? I don't know. Look, I throw everything away, so you know I wouldn't ever keep it. Yeah, you are definitely a perjurer. Okay, and afterwards she had something where she said premonition? Question mark? September 28th, 2019. Hubs, Little, and I bounced out for a two-hour drive to our friend's baby shower. Our daughter was one day shy of nine months. We packed ourselves in our car and headed to pick up a friend of mine. While we were on the freeway, I said to Hubs, I feel weird. He didn't really say anything. My strange feelings continued to get stronger, and silent tears started streaming down my cheeks. I didn't want him to worry, so I just kept quiet. Once we picked up my friend, I tried to keep it together and throw away my feelings. After all, maybe it was just postpartum. But deep inside, I had the worst feeling that something bad was going to happen. Hubs was driving, I was in the passenger seat, and my friend was in the back seat, and my littles was in her car seat in the middle back seat. Littles wouldn't stop crying, so I kept looking back trying to comfort her. I felt like crying for help myself. I wanted to scream, let's just go home. But I didn't want to disappoint my friends. I didn't know what was destined for us. I just felt like we were in danger. Anxiety filled my soul and my heart was in my stomach. As I looked back at Littles, I heard my hub say, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I turned my head forward when his third, oh my God, sank my heart further into my stomach. What I saw in the windshield was something I never thought I would see. 
a fucking deer. We hit a fucking deer on the freeway. It had jumped over the center divider into our lane. It happened so fast and flew in the air three lanes over. I can only imagine what it looked like from behind us. Our car was stopped and I looked down at myself, checking to see if I was all right. My arms had instant bruises from the airbags. And then I thought, oh shit, my littles. She was crying from the noise. The car was filled with smoke, but I felt as though I couldn't move, not from being hurt, but from shock. Once I managed to get out, I pulled littles into my arm and she seemed perfectly fine. Thank the universe. Hubs was delirious and banged up from the airbags as well. My friend then told me that she wasn't wearing her seatbelt, like I just cannot with that one. Regrouping, the car behind us helped get us from the fast lane over to the shoulder. I heard the fire trucks in the distance. I've never been in a situation like this, and I'll never forget watching them speed towards us. And can I just say, hello, firemen. We made our way off the freeway completely. All I could do was cry, not believing what had just happened. After calling our parents, my mom came to our rescue. Tears kept streaming. My entire world was in that car, and the what-ifs just would not stop. Anxiety still strikes me while driving at times, but the days get better. Well, Donna knows all about a deer Oh Lord! hitting a deer or a deer hitting her. Thank you. The deer hit me. Both times. The only thing I've hit is a mailbox. Mm-hmm. And I took that bitch out. That you did. That I did. I'm very glad that y'all were all safe, though. Yes. That is a very hard and eerie feeling when you can just feel, like, danger and uneasiness, but you have no idea why. No logical explanation why. But, I mean, it. you were more on guard, you know? Like, even your husband was a little more on guard because you said it. You know, even if he's like, weirdo. But it's in his the back of his mind yeah. because of that. So maybe he stopped a little bit sooner than he would have. Or he wasn't texting or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, I'm telling you, it helped. Hey, at least you know you got your grandma's approval of your hubby. I mean, unless that's not the same person, but I think it is. Also, you know that the coach, your cheerleading coach, had to be like, uh, when you're like, my grandmother just passed away. Like, you know what I mean? When she took the phone. Yeah. uh, uh. First of all, like, okay, I get like you defied her. Like she just said, don't do it. And then you did it. But like, don't snatch some out of somebody's hand. Right. But also, like, okay, one, this is where we need to have communication to say, hey, like, you should be able to say, hey, my grandmother's not doing well. Or like, hey, I need to check in on my grandmother. And if she would have said, yeah, like, hey, look, I can check in on my grandmother right here, like in front of you or whatever. Like, if you really had that premonition, like, you know what I mean? If you felt it and you needed to check in. Like, do it. I understand people lie or whatever, but, like, when you need to, you need to. Like, I get it. Fuck, sometimes you just remember, like, hey, I didn't get it. Like, I didn't ask my mom to come pick me back up or whatever. What You know, like, or shit, I didn't remind so-and-so to throw my clothes in the dryer or Carrie can't, walk, like, dryer scrubs and which one... <laughs> Do you know... Always with this fucking drying the scrubs. I dry my scrubs now, Donna. You know what? Fuck you for drying your scrubs now because that was a whole thing. For nine months that I lived there, I was like, oh, shit. Which ones does she not... (sighs) Because... You were very particular which clothes you dried and which clothes you didn't because some shirts you didn't dry. Yeah, but then you made me not so particular because you dry fucking everything. I dry everything. I am not one of those people. Dry everything. If it shrinks, it shrinks. I get rid of it. Or... Give it to Carrie. (laughs) (laughs) And mine, if it shrinks, it shrinks, I'd give it to Tiffany. (laughs) But seriously, I don't know. Like, I just, I hate that. Because no one listens to kids, I feel like, when it's like, hey, I need to call someone. So then kids go behind their back 
to do something, and then they're they pissed. Get, yeah, and then they're like, "You did this," and it's like, "Well, yeah, because I told you I needed to do it," and then you said I couldn't do it, but you know what? She fucking died. Yeah, like, and I'm out of here. Yep. And you're an asshole. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yep. Do you know what my mama would have done if I would have been like? She wouldn't let me call y'all, and this, well, you know what I mean? My mama would have went up there and raised hell, and then I would have been like, I can't go to school for a week, so they can forget that whole mess happened. All right, the next one is Paranormal Story. Hi, ladies. My name is Millie. I love the podcast and have maybe a paranormal story. It's stuck with me. We have a very low energy cat that doesn't do much more than nap on the couch. He's almost 30 pounds and old. It's hard for him to jump on things. Is your cat me? Right. I mean, and by that I mean me. You really are a cat. Okay, on to my story. When I was 10, my dad died by suicide. I'm an only child, so when this occurred, I was able to get all of my mom's attention. I was completely devastated, and I went to go snuggle my mom. My mom was sitting on the kitchen chair in our living room. I was an extra-large pizza child. And I took up most of my mom's whole lap. Our big cat, Hank, tried to jump up on my mama's and my lap. He's not a big fan of sitting on my lap because I have ADHD and I move around a lot. I took this as a sign that my dad was watching over me and my mom. I really hope this makes it into the podcast. It's not really paranormal and it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Sorry it's so long, but I have an evil stepmom story if you girls want to hear that. It's a train wreck. Love you guys. Well, first of all, I understand your cat, and I don't know. I think maybe it was him saying, you know, a little hi, hello. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not laughing at that. I'm just laughing at the hi, hello. All I know is that the cat was definitely trying to comfort y'all, it yes, seemed like. for sure. Because he was putting forth a lot of effort. Yeah, he was like, oh, they're sad. Something's wrong. And if you're 30 pounds and a cat, you don't want to jump anywhere. Definitely not somewhere that's going to be moving a lot. Uh Uh-uh. I don't want to jump anywhere. Mm Mm-mm. So, I totally get that. And I get not understanding, like, if it was paranormal or, you know, like, I don't really know what this is, but it seemed to be paranormal. And I think it's what you make it. You know what I mean? Some people can just be like, it was just your cat. Whatever. But you know what? It comforted you and your mom at that time. And I say, take that for what it is. The next one is, home is where the haunting is. Hey, you spooky bitches. (laughs) I feel like I'm about to write some sort of essay, which I haven't done since high school. So I'm pretty sure I'm rusty and apologize ahead of time for any grammatical errors and lack of creating writing that is to come. Meanwhile, every time y'all say that, it's fucking amazing. Yeah. Also, we just said it's almost been 20 years since we graduated from high school, And this little nugget here, they say, a little bit about myself. I'm a 25-year-old Aquarian from Ohio. I own an all-female tattoo parlor outside of Cincinnati, am newly married to the love of my life, and have a sweet little boy. I grew up in a small town in the country, like graduated with 56 kids, almost all of which I went to kindergarten with. That is Freaking awesome about the tattoo parlor. Donna's obsessed with tattoos. I love them. And all female, like, also, I was like, I just thought about uh, the tattoo angels, you know, that came from Ink Master. And then I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Like, do you watch that? Oh, my God. If you do, email me. I'm a strong empath and am very sensitive to the spirit world. My mother is the same, and after talking with others on her side of the family, it seems as if many of my cousins are as well. I have spent the last year or so researching and practicing how to control it, while also working towards understanding how to use it to help others. Before we start, I will be changing everyone's names, as there have been a few people involved and I would like to protect their privacy. Oh, and my husband hasn't even heard of most of my experiences. He has seen how I am drawn to the spirit world and how well I can read people, so I try not to freak him out too much with my stories. I'm also sorry if this email's too long. There's so much to tell, and I could honestly probably write a book. But anyway, let's get this party started. 
This story is about the house I grew up in. The same house my parents live in to this day. Picture it. A small brick home surrounded by lots of different fruit trees, a pond next door, and farmland all around. When you walk in, you're walking into the living room. Straight is the kitchen, and to the left is a small hallway with a bathroom, and all three bedrooms are at the end of the hall. I hope that makes sense. I'm going to tell a chosen number of stories starting from the time that I was six years old to the time I officially moved out as a young adult. The first time I remember feeling something in the house, I was six. My brother would have been four-ish preschool age and my sister 10. When my brother was in preschool, he would refuse to enter the hallway every single morning, would cry hysterically and just would not do it. He claimed there was a hand at the end of the hallway, like coming from behind the wall. He would show us what the hand would do. He would show us a clenched hand with the pointer finger stretching out and back in, as if to signal, come here. This went on for an entire year. On we go to about age eight or nine. My best friend, still best friends to this day, and I were wrestling around on the bottom bed of my sister and I's bunk beds when I looked to the side of the bed and see a very old, witch-looking woman hanging from the top bunk, smiling at me nearly face to face. I could only see her face, but if I could imagine, it would be like she were laying on her stomach on the top bunk, hanging her head over the bed upside down. I will always remember that face, and I do remember not really feeling afraid, just so shocked. My bestie really didn't believe me. This is until she stayed at my house one night shortly after. We were those friends growing up who were inseparable. My grandma had given my sister and I a bunch of those vintage porcelain dolls. I honestly can't remember if we got them before or after she passed. My bestie had an older sister my sister's age, and they were best friends. The four of us were playing with something, a board game maybe, in broad daylight, lights on, sitting on the floor of our bedroom, when out of nowhere, my bestie starts legitimately crying that the dolls were blinking at her. My mom ended up taking her home because she was so hysterical. This happened at least one or two more times when she came over, and my mom eventually stored the dolls away. Now that I'm thinking of it, I wonder where they are now. Anyway, fast forward a year or two later, putting me at 10 or 11 years old, one of my other good friends, still good friends to this day, we'll call her Sally, was staying at my house, and we had fallen asleep together on a recliner in our living room. I was sound asleep until I woke up, of course, at 3 a.m., Two screams right next to me. When I look over to see Sally pointing into the kitchen, do you see her? There's a girl standing in the kitchen. She has long black hair and a white dress. I didn't see her, but real quick, why are all these, quote, little girl spirits always seen this way? Anyway, I didn't see her, but she has been seen by five other friends of ours who have visited our home. Three people have seen her in our home, and two have seen her in our neighbor's yard, which is right next to our home. We had to wake my mom up that night to take Sally home. Sally and I remained close friends, but she didn't come back to my house until we were like 17, 18 years old. I also want to mention, as Sally has gotten older, she's had more experiences, including other children's spirits and black entities. Once I was 13, 14 years old, Whatever spirit or spirits were in our home seemed to start taking a liking to my mom. She had been walking through the hallway in the middle of the night to get something to drink from the kitchen when she bumped right into a human-like figure. She ran to turn the lights on and nothing was there. A few months later, she was sweeping again the hallway when she said something grabbed her ankles. She could feel that they were hands. She yelled for the dog, thinking that maybe she was overreacting, that it could have just been the dog, which was a Yorkie mix. And here he comes, running from the other room. There was another time my mom was napping during the day. 
afternoon time, I think we were at school, when she said that she had woken up and could hear people talking in the other room. I think she said a man and a woman, but she knew no one else was home. She laid there and listened to them for a minute, but really couldn't make out anything they were saying. She said as soon as she got up to check things out and her feet hit the floor, the voices stopped. My mom has always been an empath and is super sensitive, and maybe I can get her to let me send in some of her personal stories. I have two more instances to tell you about, as I think this email may be getting pretty long by now. Fast forward to 16 years old. By this point, there have been a lot more activity outside of what I've told you. Many slamming doors, flickering lights, televisions acting up, lots of strange noises, etc. However, nothing has ever hurt us, made us feel unwelcome in our home, or seemed to be negative or evil. When I was 16, I had a friend, we'll call her Anne, who had moved to our school in junior high, which is where our friendship started. There was a time when we were very close and always together. One day she had casually told me that her and her cousin played with a Ouija board at her house. She had told me that they did have some activity during their session with the board. I think it was about two weeks later, she was staying at my house, and it was about midnight. We were both laying in bed, lights out. It was dark and quiet when we heard a growl. An actual, deep, demonic-sounding growl. This time, I was genuinely scared. At first, though, we honestly kind of laughed. Like, maybe if we laugh, it'll go away. I don't know, but it didn't. This time, the growl was right in my ear, deeper and louder. Anne tells me to run and turn on the lights. Terrified, I go to turn the lights on as quickly as possible, and I do remember hearing a piece of what sounded like metal hit the ground before the lights came on. But I never found what it was. As soon as the lights came on, a baseball-sized, white, ball-looking object flew fast from one side of my room to the other into my large closet that had the door open. Both of my parents ran into my room freaking out because this object also made a loud crash when it hit, like loud. We had to sleep in the living room that night. The next day, we searched in the closet for the object and we found half of a lid of a porcelain jewelry box that I made for my mom like broken half into a triangular hard piece of glass. The other half was in the kitchen. She always kept this jewelry box in the bathroom. The next day we went to Anne's house and her family was having a get together. Everyone was outside except us. We were playing on the computer that was actually located in the kitchen. Out of nowhere, the refrigerator door swung open and a giant crock pot of food flew out and crashed on the floor. I quit hanging out with Anne after this. I had to. I have always been sensitive and I was afraid to be around that sort of energy as I believed that this was evil and it was potentially latching onto me. She had talked for years after to other mutual friends of ours that she had a black spirit taunting her, so I believe I was right about this. Okay, y'all, last little story. This one, alien, question mark, sleep paralysis, question mark. I'm 19 years old at this point. My little brother and I are sitting on the couch in the living room. It's around 12, 1 in the afternoon. My mom is taking a nap in her bedroom. We hear her scream like bloody murder. We run in to check in on her and she's sitting up in bed, quite literally looking like she had just seen a ghost. Once she's calmed down enough to say what's going on, she said that she was awake but couldn't move. There were four figures standing around her bed and one hovering directly over her, face to face. She said they were super skinny, large head and eyes, and long skinny fingers. She said that she felt fully awake but questioned if she actually was. I don't know, I can handle spirits, but demon and aliens, I just do not do. There are so many more things that have happened in this house still today, but we just don't have enough time. So I just picked some of my most memorable experiences. One last thing I want to add, I remember hearing in one of your guys' episodes of Sinister Sightings that a listener had mentioned not being able to watch scary movies in her haunted house because she felt like it revved up the activity. 
I also agree with this. My mom actually threw the movie The Exorcist in the garbage after things started happening while she was watching it. I have so many stories for you ladies, from spirit sightings during tarot readings, my son's imaginary friend he's had since he was two, who's now four, hearing bells when I'm around someone with a demonic attachment. Some people say these bells are signs of angels protecting you. And my most recent experience, driving from work, listening to you ladies per usual, and looking into my back seat twice to see a male spirit before headlights hit and he was gone. I've been wanting to send in something for a while now and I'm just now getting the time and I'm writing this around Halloween and I felt some of the stories from our haunted house would be fitting. I love that y'all give people like me a safe place to tell our stories. Since I've been listening to you ladies, I've learned so much from others like me and I've been able to make connections with people with similar stories like mine making everything that's happened in my life so far feel a little more validated. I listen to y'all every day while I'm getting ready and to and from work. I also tell almost every client about your podcast. I just love you ghouls. Creep it real and don't get scared. All the love and light, Mandy. And she left her social media thing and it's at tattoos by Amanda B as in boy V as in Victor. And you better believe I'm gonna go check it out. Oh, we know you will because we know you are obsessed with tattoos right I now. I really am. Especially face tattoos. Right now it's hand tattoos. I mean like face oh, you tattoos. Changed. Okay. No, no. Face tattoos are really good, but they can go either way. But hand tattoos, always sexy. If done correctly. I'm just gonna say like they they some that. I mean, unless it's like a wedding ring. <laughs> Don't even shut your mouth, Donna. Sometimes hearing y'all's stories, I've never been more happy to not have that power. You know, to like not have the, that ability, mm-hmm. that to be an empath, to be all the things. Yeah. I will say though, your poor friend, like when I was a kid, I would totally get homesick and have to call my dad and he would come pick me up from my friend's houses until I was in like fifth grade. It was actually, I think it was my friend... I think it was the girl who cuts my hair now. I think it was actually her slumber party for her birthday that was the first time I had ever been able to actually stay the entire night at somebody's house. Because it was a slumber party. Like, if it was a slumber party, it was like there was enough people there to keep me distracted, you know? Yeah. But if it was just like a one-on-one, when it was time to go to bed, that 10, you know, 11 o'clock at night, it was like, okay, now I'm sad and I want to go home and I would just like ball cry. So like, I don't know that just like crushed my soul. Your poor friend, like being so scared, Yeah, you know, because it just reminded me of when I would get homesick and like, she's not homesick. She's fucking terrified. Yeah. So, oh my God. Yeah. I just miss my parents. You know? I know. I know. Luckily I only stayed over at Tiffany's house really. And for a while, I would be like, can you just watch me go home? And she lived three houses down, so she did. And then I stayed over at my friend Heather's, but they were really into religious stuff. And I got really scared one time because the Jesus kept looking at me, you know? Yeah. And, like, I was like, it's looking at me, it's looking at me, it's looking at me. Like, but I, I was able to make myself go to bed. I can't even remember being when I would stay at my grandma's house, like, because... My bedroom at my house always had a ceiling fan, and none of Grandma's rooms had ceiling fans, but her oh, living Lord. room. And so it was just so quiet too. And hot, no, yeah, because there was no fan, and so it would just be like cricket, you know. Oh, yeah, I mean, I could stay there because she's my grandma. You know, I wouldn't get homesick with her, but it would just be like I'm just sitting here, you know. Yeah, sweating. Oh, that was me when we would go over to her house. Yeah. Now that's me when I go over to my parents' house, and I'm like, I'm sweating. <laughs> Turn the air down. <laughs> I'm going to leave. Okay, I don't say that, but I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to turn the fan on, Dad. He's like, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Put some fucking clothes on. I don't say fucking. <laughs> I love how you're big and bad right now. But I do say, put some clothes on. Or he'll be like, you got on a sweatsuit. And I'm like, I have on leggings and a tank top. I do not have on a sweatsuit. I have on a meat suit. 
we really do want all of those stories, like the ones that you hit us with at the end, like boom, 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 boom. Write them all, please. You know, we want all y'all who are like, I have these stories about my wicked stepmother and my this and my that. Send those bitches in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Also, funny that you have a wicked stepmother. I mean, I know we're going back, but wicked stepmother and you had the big cat. I'm just saying, Cinderella, Cinderella. Okay, the next one is called Not So Sinister Sighting. Hey ladies, big fan of the pod for over a year now and wanted to tell you one of my more positive supernatural stories from my life. I've been putting off writing this for 10 months, so maybe someday I'll write to you about the creepy parsonage house that I lived in for four years of my life after my parents divorced and when I tried to be a paranormal investigator in the fourth grade, but that's a long one that I can write in while I'm pretending to work. For context, in December of 2019, my stepdad Jeff passed away after a long battle with cancer. He and my mom hadn't been together for super long, but we always really bonded over being very introverted socialites. He was always there to support me in my art endeavors and eventually decision to pursue art therapy. So back in January, I was feeling very down on myself. I was stuck in a job that I hated and I didn't feel like I was successfully accomplishing the things that I needed to do in the beginning of my sophomore year classes. Specifically, I was really struggling in my painting class. Not good, considering it's one of my majors. And unlike most mediums that came more naturally, I was not grasping wheel-throwing ceramics in the slightest. When I'm generally having a hard time, I go on long walks with my dog Moonshine and listen to the podcast. Ironically, this time it was some APC episode. But I was walking around feeling shitty, and all of a sudden, out of the corner of my eye, I see an old guy smiling at me. Assuming it was some old fucker checking me out, I look around with a scowl, and it was Jeff. It was literally fucking Jeff. He was standing there, staring at me, smiling, giving me a little wave, and smiled at Moonshine, the dog he had never been able to meet in his life cut short while knowing my girlfriend and I were heavily considering getting a dog. After a few seconds, he began to walk into a building nearby, and I stood there in shock. Obviously, I immediately started bawling in the middle of downtown Indianapolis. It was like he was coming to check on me in the afterlife, letting me know that he was always there to support me and that I could do what I was currently struggling with. While my pup wasn't too happy, we pretty quickly walked home. I had to call my mom and tell her. She cried like a baby too, obviously. It was a touching paranormal-ish moment that still makes me emotional almost a year later. Thanks for making a great pod and keeping my commutes spooky. Much love, Olivia and Moonshine. That is very sweet. It is. And I love that he just is like standing there smiling and waving. Yeah. Just a little pick-me-up that you needed. Yes. Also, I need to know what kind of dog Moonshine is. And also, how did you end up doing in your class? Yes. Because that class is over. This is called High School Hauntings. Hey, ladies. I am obsessed with your podcast, and I love the atmosphere y'all have created. I'm still catching up, so if you guys read my story, I probably won't know for a while. I got a bit of true crime mixed with spooky stuff for you. It may be a long one, and I'm awful at explaining stuff, so sorry in advance. I'm from a small town in eastern Kentucky where everyone can agree on one thing. The high school is haunted. The school was built in the late 60s, so it's fairly new, but it was sadly the home of the first school shooting in rural America. In 1993, a student walked into room 108, the class of his most hated teacher, Miss McDavid. He shot once, missing her, then again, killing her instantly. After hearing the shots, the janitor, Mr. Hicks, ran into the room to see what was going on. He opened the door to see the student with the gun and simply asked if it was loaded. The gunman answered by shooting him. Heartbreaking. Reporters say that the shooter began to taunt the students by asking them things like, Do you think I'm crazy? Do you like me now? The students in the class had no clue how to react due to the fact that they had never been taught how. 
Some tried to calm him down. Some tried to act like he wasn't there and continued to do their work. After about 30 minutes, he asked if anyone would like to leave. Of course, the students were too terrified to speak. He then looked at two young girls who had always been nice to him and offered them to leave. My Aunt T was the first to leave after telling him she loved him. He let students trickle out slowly before surrendering himself to police. Reports say that the student had been bullied his entire life and Miss McDavid, or Little Hitler as students would call her, wasn't the nicest lady in school, especially towards him. I'm not entirely sure on the charges or anything, but I do know that he is still in prison. I never knew that my aunt was even in the room until I was old enough to go to the school and my dad told me the story. He told me about driving up there after hearing the report on the scanner at the firehouse and then the call from his chief telling him that his little sister was involved. Dad got there right about the time that he let her out. The fear he describes in my aunt's eyes makes me emotional to think about. After years and years of therapy, Aunt T still can't talk about it. Our whole family knows not to bring it up because she was so affected by it. I mean, who wouldn't be? The incident influenced the book Rage by Stephen King. My grandparents refused to watch or read anything by him due to the fact that they felt he was making money from my aunt's pain which is totally understandable, but it is such a good movie. Speaking of spooky stuff, let me tell you about the activity at the school. There are stories from my friends on the basketball and cheer team that hear balls bouncing when they're all in the locker room. The gym lights will be off and the doors to the rest of the school locked. Many people say that they feel weighed down or even headaches in room 108. She hasn't admitted that it's connected to anything spiritual, but the teacher that's in that room has had many medical problems happen right when she was moved into that room. Ask anyone who's graduated from our little school, and I'm sure they have stories. I personally feel sort of sensitive when it comes to spiritual things, and I always feel weird going into 108. I have heard voices in the bathroom when I know no one is there, and I have felt like someone was tapping my shoulder when I was in an empty hallway. The scariest story I've heard was from a substitute who was an alumni. When he, we'll call him Mike, was a junior, he had to stay for after-school detention. If students rushed through all the busy work and they still had time, they would be asked to go to the gym to make sure everything was put up. Mike drug his feet to the gym where the lights were off. Y'all, when I tell you that that gym gets dark, I mean, you can't see your hand in front of your face dark. Mike got an eerie feeling, but shrugged it off and began to look for any loose balls to put away. Mike said that he kept hearing something on wheels rolling on the other side of the gym. A janitor cart, perhaps? He finished his duty and started walking back towards the door, when a hecking basketball rolled towards him. He knew it was impossible because he put them all up. Mike said he freaked out inside, but tried to play it cool in case someone was pranking him. So like most teenagers would do, he just kicked the ball to the side and fast walked the heck out of there. He said he looked back once he was in the light of the hallway and glanced over to the windows and saw a face. Y'all, a face. No, thank you. He said later he saw a picture of the janitor who had died hanging up in the office. He knew that was the face he had seen. When he told this story, I got literal chills. So it made me think he was telling the truth. I'm so sorry this is long, but I hope you enjoyed it. Creep it real and don't get scared, y'all. I love y'all. M from Kentucky. Hell no to a fucking face. Hell no. But that makes sense that it was a janitor, since it sounded like wheels, and you said a janitor cart, maybe, and then the ball went. So, yeah. like, it makes sense that it was that. But that's so scary about that being a shooting. And then, like, the janitor being like, is that loaded? And, like, that little shithead being like, pow, like, and shot him. Like, okay, okay. No one knew how to defuse the situation. No one knew what it was. 
You know what I mean? Like, oh, God, that's so scary. I, I can't even imagine. I feel so sorry for your aunt, for your family, just for this trauma that has happened. And, you know, it's that unspeakable heaviness that, you know, y'all can't speak about because it is so traumatic for her. And, oh, God, it's just so heavy. All right, the next one says, Hello, ladies. I'm sure you get tired of hearing it, but y'all are amazing. Thank you for giving us a steady source of enjoyment in such an insane time. So I have a sinister sightings for y'all, but I'll warn you that it's not exactly sinister. Back in 2016, my grandpa died unexpectedly. I was a junior in high school, and man, he was my world. He had been my father figure forever, and he was my absolute best friend. He was a tall, leather-skinned man with a balding head, but he always wore a ball cap. He loved camping and was always down for a bonfire. He had the bluest eyes I've ever seen. My grandma actually donated his eyes because she didn't want something so pretty to go to waste. He was a huge goofball. He was missing part of his left index finger, and he had reading glasses that he never wore. He had a tattoo of a heart with an arrow through it on the inside of his right ankle, and he hated it. He was only 56 years old when he died. The emergency department doctor determined that it had been an aneurysm because he was a smoker. We never even knew it was there. He was our glue. After he passed, I didn't see my cousins for a couple of years. My grandma attempted suicide on two separate occasions. We changed all of our traditions for Christmas and Thanksgiving and our birthdays. Thankfully, my grandmother gave me quite a few of his things. I was given the throw blanket from his chair, his super cool moonshine jug, his bicentennial silver dollar, and one of his fixed blade hunting knives. Since his death, I've married and had a daughter. Back before my daughter was born, my husband was a police dispatch officer who worked third shift and would come home on his break every night. Of course, I was asleep when he did. Three nights in a row, I woke up pissed because cigarette smoke woke me up, but hubby swore he wasn't smoking. I gave him the benefit of a doubt, and it didn't come back. Then we moved houses. Now that we live in another house, I smell cigarettes all the time and everywhere. When I get laundry from the washer, while I'm making coffee, cleaning the bathroom, seriously, all of the time. But it's not the house that smells that way. It's just intense bouts that last six to seven seconds at most. It doesn't even linger. We moved houses because we wanted to buy one so that our daughter would come home to a house that belongs to her. And I think my papa agreed with us. We both believe that he makes himself known by the smell of cigarettes. And I think he's hanging around to make sure baby girl grows up safe. After all, my wonderful husband says that papa picked out my perfect girl and sent her to me. P.S. My family is once again tight-knit and together as often as possible, and we've made new traditions that we love. My grandma is doing amazing. She's living her best life and has even gone on a few dates. We've spent as much time with her as we can to keep the lonely away. Golly, I resonate with that so much. I know. You smell smoke all the time. I do, and it's not, it's so weird. It's like cigarette smoke, but not. It's almost just like... Cigarette smoke mixed with wood smoke. I can't even explain it, but I, that, but I got my mom's throw blanket from her chair. My mom's ashes are in a moonshine jug that she loved. And in the story just a minute ago, the dog's name was Moonshine. Oh, true. And my mom was the glue to our family and all of our traditions changed after that. So I completely understand. And I'm so glad that y'all got that back, though. And that y'all find comfort in that. And I'm so glad that y'all got your tradition, like your new traditions. And y'all are moving forward and, you know, onward and upward. And it all seems good. Okay, last one. So the first time I remember this happening, I was around five. I'm not sure how much detail you girls want, but I'll leave it out on the table and you can piece it together the way you want to. 
So I was around five years old, and I remember sitting in my dad's office drawing and coloring. I remember my mom was on the phone talking to my aunt. My grandma had recently found another lump, and the doctors had confirmed it was cancerous, and she was starting chemo and radiation shortly after the news. While my mom was on the phone, I decided I was going to draw a picture of my dream that I had the night before. I was really proud of it because I was able to use my sparkle crayons on this one. Oh my God, I remember the sparkle crayons and I was obsessed. I mean, if you know me, you know. So I took it out to my mom and showed her. She said she loved it, but who are the people in the robes? I said, well, that's God and that one's grandma and that one's me. And grandma said she'll wait to catch all of heaven's butterflies until I'm up there to help her. Something we did at my grandparents when she was feeling good. My mom was obviously sort of weirded out by it and told my aunt about it. The next morning, we got a call that my grandma had died late in the night. When we got there, my mom decided to take us to the babysitters. She lived right behind my grandparents, so we could literally cross the backyard and be at my grandparents'. And I remember watching people pull into my grandpa's house. My babysitter told me to run to the side door to her. And we watched as like a zillion butterflies lined the trees in her driveway. I told my mom about it on the ride home and she was just weirded out again. She never really believed that I had dreams that meant anything really. And even I'm not a big believer that my dreams mean anything. But they do line up with a bunch of specific life events. One of the most recent ones was a comfortable nightmare? Question mark? I promise I'll explain. In February of this year, my grandpa, the one married to the grandma story above, was diagnosed with pancreatic, liver, and bile duct cancer. I obviously was upset, but I even told him, Grandpa, you still have time. Don't worry. We love you and we know you love all of us. Easter Sunday rolls around and we get a call from my mom saying Grandpa had a stroke last night and we think the grandkids should plan to see him before he goes for good. We went and saw him and he told me, don't be scared. I told him, I'm not scared for you. Just because you talk goofy because of your stroke and just because Grandma, his second wife, took his teeth doesn't mean you're a scary person. It was the first time he had smiled since his stroke. I told him, you might have limited time, but don't worry. You still have some time to give everyone a little bit of hell before you go home. Heaven, he was very religious. And he did. He threw pillows at my mom and aunt when they weren't listening to him. He and grandma got a few good laughs in. And he was going on a week post-stroke. And then I had the dream. It was nothing but black, empty space. And I'm walking around going, what the hell kind of dream is this? All of a sudden, I get this warm feeling and a voice says, don't worry, I got him. And I jerked awake, sweating my lady balls off, thinking what in the actual fuck. 5.30ish that morning, we get the call that grandpa had passed away in his sleep. His death date was the day before my grandmother's 20 year death anniversary. Coincidence? Possibly. Weird? Yep. I have a few more if you're interested, but I thought since these two work together and happened fairly recently, these would be the best ones to talk about. Thanks for reading my story. Love, Kaylee. Well, just first things first, Carrie's a realist. Second thing, we want your stories. Third, thank you for sending these in. And I'm so sorry for your loss, but wow. I definitely think your dreams mean something. Yeah, sounds like it. I mean, shit. You, I mean... Uh, yeah. One time, eh, two times, uh, yeah. It's a pattern. Yeah. And I'm not saying, like, oh, if you dream it, it's it going to happen. Come. But, like, definitely with people you have a strong connection with, it does seem to resonate. Yeah. Also, the butterfly thing, just, oh. Because my sign for my mom is a dragonfly. And I saw two today and I'm just like, is that reassuring me that I'm like doing the right thing right now? Because I'm trying to like be better and like be stronger. and <laughs> Or is it like, 
trying to get your shit together <laughs> and like actually do it. Or like, what, mama, please, can you use words? Can you write in the sky for me? Right. Like do something, please. But the butterfly thing, I just think about like, you said a zillion, but I'm just thinking about them all lining the driveway. And that's just like beautiful. Like, ugh. Meanwhile, you're like, can I get a little Teresa Caputo over here or something? I mean, like, I need a little more help, mama. Yes. Cause I'm like, oh, well, we went somewhere and I was like, oh, look, Marbu, a dragonfly. There's me, mom. And then we went to another place and I was like, oh, another one. Okay. She's really trying to tell me something. What do you think she's trying to tell me? Because I need some help. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, is that reassurance or what? <laughs> Can you dumb this down for me? <laughs> oh, gosh. Like, but what? Or is it just dragonfly season? Like, it, like, seriously, right? Oh, my gosh. Y'all, and not to steal thunder from you, Kaylee, but uh, Saturday I was having a day, you know, like the kind, you know, you just want to break down and cry um, every 15 minutes. And your girl had just broke down, just randomly, uh, crying. I was in my car, and I was like, just suck it up. I have to go get some food, because, you know, I still got to eat. And, um, and you know, the human I'm helping, my dad, he has to eat. So I'm, like, driving. Poor Marbu has to, she's like, they're there with some crackers, you know, like, her, her, whatever. So when my mom passed, we sold her truck to one of our neighbors, Okay, because he had, like, wanted it forever, all this thing. Like, just for, like, a run around town kind of truck. Because he has, like, a really nicer one that takes a lot of gas, all the things. Hers is, like, a little Ford Ranger. Well, I haven't seen it in forever. And I'm, like, through, like, literally teary-eyed, I see her truck, like, right when I pull onto the, like, street. And I'm, like, I don't know if that's supposed to help me. Or, or what? <laughs> like, I was like, do I feel better? Like, and I was like, I need my mom. Oh, God. You know, but I was like, is that, do I feel better? <laughs> like, I literally asked Marley that. <laughs> <laughs> like, literally, like, you know, through me crying, <laughs> do I feel better? <laughs> Poor Marley. She, she really. She's like, I don't know. You're fucking cuckoo. Yeah, I don't she, know. She's like, can I get a treat? <laughs> can you go to somebody? They give me three treats. Literally, they give her three treats. But, like, it, it was bad. But I look for those signs. So, I don't know. Just reading your story, I'm really glad that, I don't know. And then I take that as a sign that I read your story today, too. That, like, do you see? I need, I need help. Is this, is this a sign? Is this thing on? Should I feel better? <laughs> this is me. Oh. Well, you just took us on a journey. Tell me you need a break without telling me you need a break. <laughs> oh. well, you'll get one when we go to the True Crime Podcast Festival next freaking week. Yes. If y'all want to see this in real life. Do you? Do you really? Do you? Do you want me to be like, hey, hi, he? Do you want to hear my whole life story? Because I'll tell you in five seconds. Actually, I'll tell you in, uh, I don't know. Just put me on 4.0 and then I'll tell you in five seconds. Well, we hope y'all enjoyed this episode. Thank y'all so much for sending in your stories. You know we love them so much. But more importantly, remember. Creep it real and and don't don't get scared. scared.